Now, last but not least, uh, Dr. Baldos is here from University of Hawaii to give a presentation on his research. He does research on uh, native plants, using the landscape. So yeah, I'd like to welcome and thank you for coming on such short notice. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this uh, meeting. So, uh, so I'm the um, official. My official title is I'm the assistant researcher in sustainable ornamental production. So anything that deals with ornamental plants and its production is kind of like my job. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So today I'm going to share with you the research that I'm planning on doing uh, with native Hawaiian plants. So just a, a bit of a background. So Hawaii, the, Hawaii is basically the most isolated island archipelago in the world, and it's home to unique biodiversity. We have about 956 species of native flora. About 89% are endemic, meaning they're only found here, nowhere else in the world. Uh, and we have about 343 species that are endangered and 11 plants that are threatened. Um, one of the big issues in Hawaii is invasive species, invasive plant species. Um, these are plants that threaten the ecosystem, so they kind of were introduced and they are slowly encroaching to the, the forest. And uh, ornamental horticulture is actually one of the significant contributors to invasive species spread. And uh, for the research, uh, we need to be more responsible in terms of uh, introducing ornamental species. So that's why my focus uh, uh, is on uh, promoting native wine plants for landscape use. So, uh, as I mentioned, the demand for native plants were basically due to the uh, issues of biodiversity conservation and invasive species. And um, in the 90s, there was this law called the Endangered Species Act 73 and 236 that requires uh, native wine plants uh, in state publicly funded state uh, landscaping and uh, in recent years uh, roadside right-of-way areas have also been uh, trying to use native plants on roads roadside plantings so uh, the demand for native Hawaiian plants is expected to increase in the next 20 years because of this uh, law that was recently passed called uh, the Act 233 uh, relating to Hawaiian plants and this law um, uh, aims to increase the percent of native plants in public landscaping from 10% by 2019 to 35% by 2030. Um, one of the challenges, I guess there's several challenges to using native Hawaiian plants in landscapes. Uh, uh, these two people, Tamimi and uh, Ricordi, did some surveys on uh, with landscape architects and they found uh, three, basically three uh, areas wherein there's a challenge with, with using native plants in the landscape. Uh, first would be lack of availability. There's not much uh, sources for native plants. Uh, second would be lack of variety. As you can see in this picture, it's mostly like uh, what, what we currently use is the pata the, uh, and um, uh, that uh, fern, lawae. Uh, and then the third one is there's also uh, gaps in like how to maintain these plants. So we've been, I guess, uh, people want native plants in the landscape, but um, the maintenance aspect is the one that's kind of lacking right now. There needs to be some sort of education in terms of uh, how to maintain these plants because these are a little bit different from your typical ornamental plants that you're here with your like bulletproof cookie cutter, just do anything plants. So they, they require a little bit more special um, care. So that's where my research comes in. So uh, one of the main things that I want to do for, for, for my research is to increase varieties and selections of uh, native plants for the landscape. So uh, I think there's still a lot more species that are underutilized. So um, kind of focusing on like Ilima, uh, some of the grasses, and then some of the shrubs over here. So, 
And then this Sedge, uh, this is actually uh, Eric's uh, Oahu Sedge. So for Ilima, um, I actually got funding to uh, collect germplasm uh, from all over the state and uh, try to evaluate the germplasm for potted flowering plants for landscape use. So uh, this picture over here is actually a selection that we got from uh, seedling population on, on Molokai. And I think it has a good form in terms for like for potted flowering plant. Um, and then this picture up here on your right shows you the diversity of the growth forms of edema. So there's some that are uh, like big leaf and then very upright. Some that have really thick leaves that are grayish in color but doesn't have any flowers. And then there's some that are just running prostrate on the ground. And then you can see also the diversity in terms of flower size. There's, this is the commercial uh, Ilima that we, we usually see in the landscape. Um, I think it's like a one inch diameter. And this is what the wild type would look like. The ones that you collect in the wild. It's a little bit smaller. So aside from Ilima, I'm also looking at uh, native grasses for landscaping. Because I, I, I think uh, we haven't really that that much in terms of our native grasses in the mainland they're very very common in <coughs> landscaping um, and they're actually pretty low in maintenance compared to like your shrub your your, your ornamental shrub so i'd like to uh, uh, introduce or um, increase more of these varieties so this plant over here is actually uh, an aerogrostis species uh, it's called pacific love grass and it's uh, endemic actually to the Big Island. And um, it actually has uh, ornamental potential because it's very upright. And it doesn't, uh, unlike peony grass, it doesn't have that seed that kind of pokes you. So that's that just plants in the ground right there with the geotech? Yeah, with just a weed mat. Yeah. It's just, um, I, I planted it with a weed mat just to control the weeds around it. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, there's also uh, different types of aki-aki grass, like Sporopolis, the one that you find in the ocean uh, or around, along the beach. I collected, because I got some of the materials from the USDA facility on Molokai, so they collected like uh, about five accessions from different islands and uh, they actually have different characteristics, so we can actually select for certain uses for this grass. Salt water tolerant. Yeah, salt water tolerant. Wow. Um, and then this is the mamaki api, which is uh, another salt tolerant sedge, which is, uh, I've, been, I've, I've been seeing is this uh, more and more in uh, like uh, BOD projects, like for the biosoil. Um, uh, <coughs> then this is a carrot species that's found in the, on Maui. And actually this is the actual one. Uh, so it's Carex macloviana. This this is a small Carex, not your typical the Oahu sedge, which is very 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 uh, it's big. This one is a smaller uh, sedge. Uh, then this is a peony grass that's prostrate. It just lies flat on the ground. It might have some applications. And um, this is a variegated Carex that we are trying to. Uh, Propagate more. Marga, how would you um, actually market it? Do you put in seedings and sell it? <coughs> that's how the landscaper brings it to the site, or is it seeds? For the, the sticks and grass? For the grasses, um, depends on the, if it's easier to propagate from seed, then maybe by seed. But those not seed, right? Like the one on um, this one, well, this one produces seed, the, that one. Uh, actually very hard to, we're, we've been doing the division and it, we're not very successful in division, so I think seed is the way to go for that one. Uh, but for some that um, don't produce seed, like the uh, aki aki grass, you usually sell them by cuttings. You guys are running that love grass on the side of the freeway by UH? Yes, that's yes. Where that was that's yeah. Lot. And so, what is the wind not uh, messing it up? Not really. Yeah, really? It's still going good. It's still going. Actually, the peony is 
the love grass maybe not so much for the uh, rolling the cabelos, side, yeah. yeah but pili is very tough yeah. it's still there yeah yeah so aside from grasses i'm also interested in looking at selecting um, different shrub species so this is these are two uh, Aveo Aveo uh, species that were collected from Olokai. They're very prostrate. prostrate. Uh, one really hugs the ground, and then there's one that is slow, but it's a little taller. It's kind of like a small hedge. So I think I see some potential there for, for, for these two to be released as like a variety of sorts. Um, and also, uh, looking at, I'm also interested in looking at like the Pithosporos, uh, the Hoawamas, Ali, Pukiyabe, I haven't seen this much, maybe it's a little diff difficult to propagate, but uh, that's what I'm, why I'm here, I'm going to do uh, some propagation studies to see how, how this can be um, introduced into the landscape trade. And then this is uh, the Baltia, the uh, Hawaiian main work for this particular reference. So in order to uh, increase and also to release this, these varieties uh, and, and it, to make it more to make it feasible for the landscape industry, uh, we're looking at different ways to propagate this species. So we're testing the vision uh, using cuttings uh, like leaf cuttings or vision, uh, trying to use uh, uh, rooting powders to improve the uh, propagation of these species. And another thing that I'm interested also is trying to select for native plants that can handle indoor conditions. So I'm focusing on like the peperomias, the native peperomias, and then the carex. So these are actually three different types of uh, carex. This is the, your typical wahoo set. And then these are, uh, I haven't seen this in the market yet, but these are the, 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 the smaller, finer leaves uh, carex. And then there's some. Uh, Peperomias that have variegation that would be interesting to, to test indoors. Also, trying to do selections on potted flowering plants. So this, this, this is basically my uh, like uh, prototype, wherein I have that same the grass uh, grass selection and then the kilima selection that I have and then the uh, avail veil selection, using it as a for, for potted gardens. And another idea that I'm kind of pitching is trying to do selections for floricultural use. So um, this ogia over here, I think I see some potential for use in like bouquets. So you can see that this is a bouquet here. Uh, we try to incorporate um, this as a full cut foliage. And so I'm kind of interested in testing how long this will last in, in, like in, in a vase and trying to do propagation as well as uh, how to produce this at, for, for that particular market. Um, how long will it take to grow a piece like that? Um, that I have to find out because... Um, might be good to do that first. <laughs> yeah. Because I got this from... We have a tree actually in um, at the Magoon research station and it's I asked Dr. Criley like how easy it is to propagate and he said it's very easy to propagate from stem cuttings mm -hmm. so I think the next thing to figure out is how fast the growth rate is if it's really fast or what so um, yeah that could be a long term project so uh, aside from that Pukiyabe um, uh, also I'm interested because it has a really nice leaf texture that might be useful like in making wreaths or Christmas wreaths of sorts and uh, I, I haven't seen much research on propagating this species by cuttings uh, so those are just two of uh, some of the species that I'm looking at um, and also um, for general ornamental plant production um, I'm interested in trying to test like coir and cinder because uh, it's more it's cheaper compared to peat peat moss and it's more sustainable because it's well peat you mine it whereas uh, coconut coir is basically a byproduct of uh, copra production production so 
uh, and I th I think I'm I've been seeing more more and more nurseries here switching from I guess P to four, so I'm interested in in that sort of research. Uh, and then finally, uh, also interested in like the non non native but non invasive ornamental species like mosaicas. So trying to popularize them in landscapes as well as for like potted uh, applications. So uh, feel free to email me if you have any questions or any suggestions on uh, like research that you would like to uh, know, I guess, or topics that you want for research. And then we could maybe try to write a grant on that. So, thank you.